the Indian Association of Structural Engineers, also known as ISTRUCT-E, was conceptualized and constituted in the year 2002 by a group of senior professional structural engineers from all over the country. ISTRUCT-E is registered under the Society's Registration Act 21 of 1860. ISTRUCT-E is a national apex body of structural engineers in India with a mission to promote structural engineering profession and cater to the professional needs of the structural fraternity. In the short span of two decades, association has attained an eminent position in the professional field. Its membership is valued very highly in the profession. Since inception, IAS Structi has been led by eminent structural engineers like late Sri Mahindra Raj, late Sri Sri Kumar Ghosh, Sri Subhash Chand Mehrotra, Professor Mahesh Tandran, Sri Alok Bhomik, and Sri Manoj Mittal as its president. IA Structi is a permanent member of Engineering Council of India and interacts with the government on professional and policy matters related to civil and structural engineers. To expand its reach, IA Structi has collaboration with various international professional like-minded associations and institutions. IA Structi's prime objective is supporting and protecting the profession of structural engineering by upholding professional standards and acting as a mouthpiece for structural engineers in India. IA Structi endeavor to ensure that its members develop the necessary skill in structural engineering and work to the highest standards by maintaining a commitment to professional ethics and standards. IA Struct is actively engaged in organizing several continuing professional development CPD courses for structural engineers to help them update their knowledge and advance their career paths. It also conducts refresher courses for young and practicing engineers and student-oriented programs, seminars, workshops, conferences, technical lectures and discussions related to the latest technological advancements and case studies are also organized regularly for members to enable them to continuously update their knowledge and skill set by interacting with the best minds from the industry. IAS Structi's activities are widely appreciated and known for quality quality technical contents. IA Structi is also actively engaged in publishing its quarterly journal Structural Engineering Digest SED, code commentaries, professional guidelines and a monthly newsletter. IA Structi's publications are becoming popular with time. IA Structi has representation in various technical committees of BIS and IRC as well. Its members are actively contributing to National Code of Formulations. In the year 2020, IA Structi started National Awards competition to stimulate interest in the structural engineering field and to promote innovative thinking and creativity. The awards are presented to the winners in recognition of their outstanding contribution to structural engineering in the categories which include Outstanding Structure, Outstanding Structural Engineer, Outstanding Woman Structural Engineer, Promising Young Structural Engineer and Best Master's Thesis in Structural Engineering. IA Struct E is currently operating from four regional centers namely Eastern, Western, Northern and Southern having its headquarters in Delhi to inculcate the professional culture and provide handholding to the budding engineers. IA Struct E has its student chapters in several leading engineering institutions as well. Membership of IA Struct E is open to all civil and structural engineers engaged in structural engineering profession. Members are elected based on their qualifications and experience in different grades as per eligibility requirements prescribed in the bylaws. Each application is carefully scrutinized before electing the members. More information about IA Struct E is available on its website www.iastructe.co.in. Well, uh, 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Prem Krishnan. I am a former professor of structural engineering from the IIT Roorkee. And I have been involved in the formulation of the scheme on accreditation of practicing structural engineers. That is the subject of our session uh, today. Uh, I uh, welcome you all, particularly engineer Abhijit Kulkarni, who is the main speaker today. And uh, he has been involved deeply again in formulating this scheme. The <clears throat> He is a very eminent structural engineer, a project principal and country director structures of Bureau of Hepold. Uh, some other members of the committee who have been involved may be joining later to us and will be available to interact with us. And I heartily welcome our participants who have uh, come to join this session. The uh, <clears throat> scheme that we are talking about was um, launched in January this year. And as has been explained earlier in uh, some webinar sessions, upon successful completion of the process, the practicing structural engineer will be recognized as accredited structural engineer, IA structure. This accreditation will help structural engineers to set a benchmark of proven professional and technical excellence and raise the levels of structural engineering practice in the country. The details of the scheme have been available on the website of IA Structi. And the overall structure of the scheme was explained in two webinar sessions, which were held earlier this year, one on 24th of January, and the next one on 19th April. And uh, the structure of the scheme was formulated, uh, was explained. Uh, we thought further, that it will help the prospective participants who want to enter this process. It will make things comparatively easier for them to go through the uh, process. If we have more detailed sessions in which we can explain the major aspects of the scheme. And it is with this purpose that we are having the first session of the orientation program today. The first session is addressing the issue of key attributes and their implications. In fact, this is the heart of the whole thing. It is with respect to uh, these key attributes that one can benchmark one's uh, capabilities or competencies as a practicing structural engineer. So this is what we will be addressing today. Subsequent sessions will be held, one on the IPD form, which is the initial professional development form that will be filled in. And it will relate to the key attributes. And the form will contain details of work that you have done uh, as a practicing structural engineer so far. And there will be documentary uh, proof of the work that you've taken up. This will be a sizable document. So the second session we'll take up to try and explain how to go through this uh, process of filling up the IPD form. And once uh, you have filled up this form, 
uh, there will be an interview, a comprehensive interview by peers, which through which you have to go through and pass through it before going to the next step, which is to appear in a, uh, a day's examination. So it is these four aspects that we have uh, uh, thought of covering in these orientation sessions, the key attributes and their applications, the IPD form, the interview, what is expected from the applicants in an interview of this kind, and the examination, what kind of uh, expectation is there in the examination from the prospective participants. So those are the four parts in which we will be holding orientation sessions. So for the first uh, session today, uh, which is talking about key attributes and their implications, I'll uh, request uh, Mr. Kulkarni to kindly take over now. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dr. Prem Krishna. Um, I hope my voice is audible and my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Okay, excellent. So just on the, and th thanks for inviting me for this. Uh, it's a real honor and pleasure to be part of this entire process uh, to improve the general stock changing practice in the country. So today I will cover the key attributes and their implications as to what as an association uh, expecting from the prospective candidate uh, to become a accredited uh, structure engineer. Uh, little bit, one step back on this is the Propose or, or the pro candidate has to fill in the documents and the IPD forms, which we'll have another session with the documentary evidences, and then entire um, package, which will be about you know four to five centimeter thick uh, box file, will then go to the interviewers, and then there will be an interview based on the entire entire documentation. The key uh, weightage would be given to first four key attributes, and I'll come to that in a while. And the reason being, those are the key attributes that are critical to be a practicing structure engineer. Now, these attributes, actually they are eight in numbers, but then uh, attribute number six has been subdivided. So that's how they become total 12 key attributes. They have been, clubbed into three categories. There is engineering, which is the core of it. Then there is obviously management and commercial aspects and the experience and associated um, uh, work that the candidate may have done. And then uh, personal in terms of communication and understanding of the uh, interpersonal skills and so on and so forth. So these activities, the, the split into this is then each attribute is then provided with the competency level. So certain attributes are, you know, more of an introductory thing and certain attributes we expect the charter or the, so the accredited structure engineer to be able to uh, do on his or her own without a supervision. So that's why we have four levels of competence. So all 12 core objectives, you don't need to have, each one has to reach to four, uh, level four. There are certain key objectives where, uh, key attributes where you should be uh, at level four. There are others where you probably would, probably would be at level three and level two and level one. So just um, level one to four is basically increasing order of knowledge and experience. Now. If you look at this key can attribute. I just, can I just interject for a yes. half minute? Uh, as uh, Mr. Kulkarni is explaining things to you, you may have questions that arise in your mind. Uh, please place them in the Q&A box so that at the end of the presentation, we can discuss those. Thank you. Yeah. 
so these are the overall number of uh, attributes uh, one to uh, one to eight but as i said uh, attribute number six is further divided into five so that's how they become 12. Uh, the competency level uh, if you see for on the top um, blue to um, brown uh, we just color coded it for the ease of understanding um, for the prospective candidates so first three there on the left finding solution and concept creation analysis and design understanding of material imposing factors affecting deterability um, those are critical uh, then comes to experience in construction again competency level four uh, level three uh, then comes to knowledge of new development uh, and then so on and so forth. So I, each one of that I will discuss. But what is important here for a prospective candidate to understand is not necessarily that a prospective candidate would have all this information available or readily um, you know, um, um, manageable um, in a document evidence. So the person who is attempting this uh, will probably need to spend some time in looking at what he and she has done in the past, looking at the data that they have worked, looking at the projects that they have done and collate that information and then format it in these uh, uh, key attributes. So let's go to the first one, which is um, finding solutions and concept creation. So this is absolutely critical for a structural engineer. Ability to produce viable structural solution within the scope of design brief, taking count of structural safety, stability, economy, aesthetics, durability, and sustainability. That's what we do as a practicing structural engineers. So, and if you see here competency level four, that means the person should be able to do it without uh, any supervision. So the person who is attempting for this accreditation program should be able to demonstrate that he, he or she has done it in the uh, document evidence format. Um, so to produce the concept design, candidate should be able to demonstrate ability to understand, uh, obviously, the assessment of design brief, uh, location of the structure in terms of seismicity, flood, um, wind speeds, um, function of structural systems, it could be building, it could be bridge, it could be silo, it could be, you know, um, any any industrial structure. And then uh, associated usage of material, uh, relevant use of material, the foundation systems, load transfer mechanism. So it's basically all, an, uh, you know, associated structural engineering basics that the person should be able to uh, demonstrate that he or she has done it uh, in, in the interview. Then comes the second key attribute, which is uh, analysis and design. So you set up a concept in the first key attribute. In second key attribute, you should be able to demonstrate that you are capable of carrying out analysis and design of structural forms and familiar, familiar with the relevant national or international design codes. Um, so what we want is uh, an accreditation, uh, accredited structure engineer should be aware of basics of structure analysis. It is not expected them to be, you know, master in finite element analysis or any particular analysis software or package, but they should be able to judge from the analysis, from looking at the structure and from looking at the um, you know, loading conditions, they should be able to judge that how the given structure is going to perform and provide a structural solution for that particular uh, building or bridge or you know any of the structure. Uh, approximate analysis are good enough for the person to be able to understand this and to be able to uh, uh, provide the competency level. Uh, thorough knowledge of um, structure engineering uh, and then mechanics uh, is expected um, from the candidate uh, and that includes uh, behavior of the materials in static and dynamic conditions uh, non-linear uh, if there is any any particular requirement of any particular project 
and nonlinear analysis or progressive collapse and so on and so forth. So again, this key attribute is uh, competency level, if you see there is four, that means the candidate should be able to uh, do it on his or her own without a supervision. Um, what is expected uh, from the candidate uh, when you're preparing the IPD forms is um, uh, designed or have designed uh, at least one primary structure in one primary material. Uh, you, can, you could have done more, that's fine, but at least one is mandatory. Uh, it could be concrete, it could be steel, masonry, timber, or combination of that, uh, depending on uh, which your material used and which your code used. That's fine. It's not. It's not telling you that you must design using certain specific codes. Um, and then, ability to understand the flow of force and making sure that the structure designed in such a way it's stable. Uh, in its usage and in 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 the event of uh, you know wind and extreme earthquake conditions. Um, then let's go to um, again here it says use appropriate standard code. So basically, it, it is not specifically saying that it should you should be aware of any particular codes of any country. Um, preferably India because you know the entire process in uh, is for accreditation in India. But uh, even if you have uh, experience in European courts, American courts, or any, any other nationals and uh, national courts or standards, that's also acceptable. Um, then candidates should be able to review uh, and develop uh, specifications for the works. And that includes usage of material, material testing, workmanship. Um, and then when we say should be able to, the candidate should be able to demonstrate that yes, that person has undergone this sort of experiences and there is a evidence of it when you fill in your um, uh, IPD forms. So the IPD form kind of becomes a document evidence saying that yes, I'm done it. And that's how you build in your entire document against which you will be interviewed. Um, Let's go to the next one. Um, understanding of material, including factor affecting the durability. Again, the objective here is understand various construction materials, their design models, uh, ability to specify the materials. Sorry. Uh, appropriate and, and then coordinate with use of materials. So there are obviously, you know, different grades of concrete, different grades of reinforcement, different grades of structural steel different products for corrosion protection, fire protection, um, um, products for waterproofing. So ability to use these materials uh, in the design is mandatory for the, um, for the chartered or, or accredited structure engineer. Now, primarily in India, you will have steel and concrete. But when we have this, um, we would expect the, uh, the engineer to be uh, to have knowledge of their specifics in terms of, you know, if you take structural steel, you know, stress strain curve, whether it is a high strength steel or mild steel, uh, buckling resistance, fatigue, uh, and then limitation of use in terms of fire or in terms of long span structures. Similarly, in concrete. Uh, we would expect uh, the candidate should have knowledge of obviously different grades of concrete and stress and curves and associated uh, creep and shrinkage characteristics, uh, resistance to the fire, thermal behavior of the concrete. Um, and then obviously there are combinations of these materials which are, you know, if, if it is there, well and good. If it is not there, the candidate demonstrates at least one material, that's good enough comes to key attribute number four, which is experience in construction. If you see here, competency level has dropped down to three now, uh, because uh, obviously we are not expecting uh, structural design engineers to be uh, you know, delivering uh, projects on site. Um, <clears throat> what is expected 
from the candidate is exposure to construction processes and related aspects to understand the uh, complete cycle of realization of project from concept of design to finished product. So when you are at your design desk, you should be thinking of how it is going to be built rather than leaving it to the site team to figure out how the rebar should go or how the construction of composite column or composite um, deck should happen. So that thinking has to be there during your design. And that's why experience in construction is critical to provide a viable design. So if you see the, the, the last bullet point, it is, not recognized. it is recognized that not all candidates will have spent continuous period of sight of any specific length. And in such case, they expected to accumulate experience in an evalu uh, equivalent of three months. So you may not be stationed as, if you are, fantastic, well and good. So you are capable of designing as well as you are capable of um, you know, executing um, uh, sites. But suppose you are not, which is probably the case for most of the design engineers, you would still be visiting sites for your inspections, maybe your site visits planned by your you know, construction engineers. Uh, you might be attending some of the site progress meetings. So all this uh, uh, you know, records of your uh, involvement during site are critical to, to form or to, to, sup to support this uh, application under this attribute. Now, sometimes, you may not have any information about it, uh, which is rare, but suppose you don't have it, but they then prior to applying for this particular position or this particular um, accreditation program, we strongly uh, encourage you to gain this knowledge uh, in, in these areas of construction. Could be demolition, could be combination of all this, survey and setting, material testing, uh, defect and university. and all these documents are there uh, in in um, on the IA Structi website, so you can go at leisure. But the fact is, what we are trying to achieve here is a person having a competency level of three uh, as a minimum uh, for prior to applying for uh, accreditation program. Uh, then comes knowledge of new development. Again, if you see their competency level has dropped down to two, uh, which means that the candidate may not necessarily have all the information, but some of it. And if you see the competency level, I'll probably go back to the slides where I've shown the competency level. If you see here, knowledge and understanding of the subject and its application. So you may not have experience into it, but you should have a knowledge and understanding of it. Uh, that's your competency level two. So just going back to the next one. Yeah. So the knowledge of new development in the field of structural civil and other branches of engineering. So what is that? It could be the latest technology which is coming into place, which is maybe a BIM, perhaps not latest anymore, but uh, uh, you know, uh, your, your uh, uh, digital twins or structural health monitoring, new materials like composites, uh, the uh, DFMA, Design for uh, Manufacturing uh, and Assembly, which is the modular construction these days. Um, not so familiar in India uh, in, in, in that big scale, but you should be at least aware that, yes, these things are happening around the world. Uh, these things will come to India at some point in time. And, uh, you know, you are reading through the, the uh, technical documentation or technical papers associated with this. And that's how you have to uh, put into your IPD form saying that, yes, I've been reading through, I've learned this, I attended some session, I attended some program or a seminar or so on and so forth. And, and obviously 3D printing is another one. Recent developments in earthquake engineering, performance-based design for earthquake, performance-based design for wind, these are some recent techniques uh, which are uh, which have been implemented uh, in Western world. Uh, here again, experience is not critical. Knowledge is critical. Yes, I know that I have. Uh, I know that there is these things happening. I've been attending some sessions here and there, so that's critical. Um, again, 
attribute number six is divided into five sub attributes and that's why uh, we'll come to that later but again objective here is experience in management skills of uh, for programming the activities and controlling and should have precision of relevant laws and statutory legislation so this comes under that commercial aspect of uh, the key attributes so the first one was the engineering the second one is now commercial aspects um, so this experience what uh, we are expecting in under this key attribute 6.1 to 6.5 uh, can be gained uh, by attending some project meetings uh, develop of uh, developing project management skills uh, in consultation with the right set of people within your organization uh, managing people so we would expect an and a accredited engineer to be at a level where he or she has a team uh, to manage interact with uh, you know uh, wider stakeholders uh, is expected to provide timelines for deliverables um, and and then um, work with the uh, partners which is more into you know architecture partner mep partner or, or maybe a geotechnical engineering partner so experience in management again comes to competency level 3 um, uh, what you need there is uh, managing the project. Now, when we say managing the uh, team management and uh, project management, we are talking about design level management, it's the design management, not the overall project management like what they do at, you know, PMCs. So here we are talking about more of a design management uh, and then how you um, manage your resources, your deliverables, how you manage client expectations, and uh, in, in terms of um, your uh, submissions, in terms of liaison with other um, disciplines and, and um, you know, associated communication. Um, so candidates are required to have experience of management and to have developed leadership skills. Now, this is critical uh, to an accredited engineer that the moment you are saying that I'm accredited, uh, the expectation is high and expectation is you are a rounded professional so you have hands-on experience in design you have fair bit of information and knowledge about and little experience about the uh, construction activities and then you have experience um, in, in um, uh, you know these other aspects of which are required uh, which are critical for uh, successful completion of the project but they are not engineering they are more of a uh, communication and interpersonal skills and we expect an accredited engineer to have done this now appreciation of legal aspects uh, competency level drops down to one because we all are engineers we are not lawyers so we i would not or one would not expect um, engineers to know every corner of the law but they should be aware that what are the statutory legislations, uh, contractual laws, what is the uh, contract conditions that we have one has signed, what are the arbitration processes that we have. And this is just an appreciation. It's not even full-fledged knowledge. It's just an appreciation saying that, yes, I know that under given circumstances, a contractor can go to court, contractor can go, go for arbitration, contract go for litigation, uh, where is that mentioned in the contract documentation uh, and then you know how that translates into how I communicate uh, with the uh, on, on the project um, again appreciation of commercial issues again competency level one here uh, which is we are not cost consultants although in India uh, structure engineers are expected to provide bill of quantities but at the end of the day we are engineers uh, we are designers right we are not the cost consultants so you may have knowledge you may have experience which is good but even if you don't have it appreciation towards this commercial aspect is good enough uh, to be uh, to, to to satisfy this key attribute number uh, 6.3 or attribute number 8 different forms of contracts slightly more increased level of competency required why because different types of contract will require 
different actions from design engineers. Now, if you are in PPP contract, you would be working for perhaps a government body. If you are in BOT contract, you might be working for contractor uh, or DNB contract, you might be working for a contractor. Uh, you might be uh, appointed by client under FIDIC white book, or you might be appointed by client under their own contract conditions, which are not necessarily FIDIC white book, but equivalent. So when you are communicating to uh, site or to your, your uh, stakeholders, your collaborators, you should be aware that certain words in contract uh, are are critical when you mention this in communication. And that's where we expect knowledge of the contract, uh, the competency level two from this accredited uh, structure engineers. You may not be experienced into communication. You may not be experienced into interpretation of the contract clauses. If you are, well and good. If you are not, still it is fine. Because, but you should be you should have a knowledge of these forms of contract. Uh, similarly, health and safety. Um, again, structure engineering. Uh, we all know that uh, you know things go wrong, and if they go wrong, they go drastically wrong in structure engineering. And there is always that uh, risk of collapse and uh, loss of uh, you know loss of revenue, loss of property, loss of life, uh, and that's why. Uh, and then repairs are you know, rectifications that are expensive in structure engineering. That's why knowledge of health and safety uh, and the risk management are critical uh, for structure engineering. So when you're designing, you should be thinking if, if things go wrong, what will happen, right? And that's why uh, we expect a competency level two uh, for this attribute. Uh, then comes to uh, communication, absolutely critical for a chartered or an accredited um, structure engineer. Effective communication is a must. Uh, whether it is in local language, whether it is in English, whether it is by letters, emails, sketches, uh, all of that. Uh, clear, precise sketches, uh, concise uh, information. This, it is expected that a, a accredited engineer is very good at communication because that's how a structure engineer can communicate a structural design to a non-structural engineer or non-structural person. It could be your client, it could be your architect, it could be your authority, it could be your contractor. They may or may not know, but you as an accredited engineer should be able to communicate uh, in clear and concise manner uh, in, in a proper wording, proper document, proper sketch. Um, and, and what we expect uh, in the IPD is a document evidence that you have done it in the past. And that's how you're applying for this accreditation program. So you will have to collate some of the information retrospectively and put that into your attribute number 11 form saying that, yes, I've done it on this and this project and these are my evidences for it. And that brings us to um, probably last one is commitment towards professional and objectives of association. Again, we are talking about competency level two here uh, because what we don't want is lose this entire grip on the construction engineer or, or structure engineering program. So we want to have a commitment so that means you would be attending uh, continuous improvement um, programs. Uh, you would be learning continuously. You'd be spending time into uh, reading some industry in, in some publications. Uh, you might want to write some publication, which is great. But if you are not into that, uh, that mode and you are still able to read documents, then could be could be ISTUCT, could be ICE, could be any other uh, I struck T could be, you know, uh, American code and American publications, doesn't matter. As long as you can say that I have done this and this has improved or my understanding of this particular topic and I spent probably what, one hour, two hour on this particular topic. So if you see the document, um, the, chart, the accreditation program document, you'll see there um, how many hours you need to spend uh, after becoming accreditation. Um, normally it would be varying from 
40 hours a year to about 60 hours a year uh, going through all this um, um, you know attending this uh, maybe an external course maybe a seminar maybe reading through some publication and so on and so forth so that's at a competency level too uh, we we would expect candidate to have awareness of other similar associations like uh, Institute of Engineers India, uh, FIB, IABSE, ISTACTI UK, ASCE. Um, because at the end of the day, what we want to achieve here is general improvement in structural engineering um, practices in India. And to do that, we encourage, uh, whether you are becoming charter uh, accredited or not, we encourage everybody to to uh, you know up their skills by doing this process. And my personal experience um, says that if you format yourselves in this manner uh, with this chartership, this accreditation program, um, you know all these key attributes, you will understand that where you are lacking, and that's where you can concentrate yourself, and that's how you can become a rounded professional. Right. You not necessarily have everything as of today, but if you say that, yes, I'm going to go for this program and I want to become a chartered or accredited, sorry for this, um, I keep repeating charter because that's how <laughs> I became chartered. So accredited uh, uh, structure engineer, uh, if you decide to do that, you'll probably need to spend maybe three to four months time in collating all this, formatting yourself, understanding where you are lacking, making sure that 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 particular lacuna is filled and then apply for it. And that that way you will become uh, more of a, a rounded professional. Uh, as uh, Professor uh, Prem Krishna said, uh, uh, so that, that finishes my presentation today. Uh, we'll take a question and answer session in a while. And as Professor Prem Krishna said, we'll be repeating uh, we'll, we'll be following this particular uh, session with three more sessions uh, where we'll be talking about IPD forms, uh, what is do's and don'ts during the interview on the, the document that you submit, and the last one is the examination. And that brings me to the end of this particular um, session. Um, I, I'll give it to Mr. Dr. Prem Krishna now. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kulkarni for so painstakingly producing all this material and explaining in very clear terms what our attributes are all about. Uh, <clears throat> there are a few questions, but I seem to have, uh, I lost the link in between. So I have lost, uh, I remember there were four questions, which so I don't seem to see now in okay. my question answer box. <laughs> would, would you? Fine. I, 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 I'll read through and then uh, I'll probably. And Mr. Uh, Umesh Rashirk has also joined us. Yeah. So oh, sorry, I was a bit late. There was some other important meeting going on. Yeah. That's uh, right. So sorry for that. So we can take those questions between us. Yeah. 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 So the first one is come from uh, Mr. Achyut Ghosh. He's saying that, sir, I was thinking that if we do the interview after the examination, there will be much less people to interview, save us the requirement of high level personnel doing, uh, personals doing the interview. Uh, so what he's trying to say is swap the interview yeah, the examination. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Ghosh, uh, yes, uh, this is an option, but we debated this quite a bit in our committee. And I'm aware that the reverse also has been used. The reverse system has been used. But we thought this is a better one. Uh, we take the person to the examination only after we have cleared him uh, through every other screen. And that is why we thought of this particular way of doing it. Uh, we will find uh, highly competent people to do the honors of interviewing people like Mr. Ghosh himself. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think that answers uh, Mr. Ghosh's question. Yes, then I could see multiple questions from Mr. Malay Kumar Dev. Uh, one, two, three, four, four questions. So I'll probably read one of them and then we can talk about. How is this certification of I is written? I think he's, he meant to say I is shall be valuable in the practice. 
no municipal council in the country is asking for it no tender is giving any conditions with such certification there are already certification from professional engineers already exist by the institution of engineers india and engineering council of india how the certification of i structure shall be preferred on other uh, for what reasons how to resolve the confusion okay uh, all <laughs> who wants to take it um, uh so uh, though there are a certification by other institutions like institution for engineers so their format is completely different and though at present this particular accreditation program is not recognized by the government but eventually with the our the rigor and the effort uh, how it will be uh, considered uh, by the many municipal corporations or state pwds or um, even the central government and we are very very uh, positive on this particular point see the point is not just a um, recognition by the government the main point is the basically the process and abhijit has used a very right word that is a formatting formatting of our entire approach toward the profession so what as a uh, association as a association for the structural engineers we are mainly um, um, uh, basically concentrating on that particular uh, part getting the see even for you getting this accreditation or not is the the next step but going through the process is very important uh, if you see this all the key attributes if you try to uh, achieve those attributes that itself is a big uh, uh, challenge and achievement so uh, and eventually definitely it will be uh, um, uh, recognized by uh, uh, all our government uh, organizations i'm very sure of for that can i add something yes. here yeah yeah please look uh, mr malay i think see uh, you know the process has started right and we have to give time to to uh, the process to sort of cook itself and uh, materialize itself uh, what is important is uh, you know if we do this and it's you know why i'm saying this is i've gone through this process for in a, in a different um, institution when you do this you will understand that what are the areas where you as an individual require to improve and that's for us as a as an association of structural engineers it's good enough because if we have out of whatever maybe millions of whatever engineers we have even if we do 5% of those engineers going through this process and format themselves that's good enough that's that's a real yeah. beginning of it and over right. a period of time it will it will continue and then we'll you know the more we do it the better will become it is and, a continuous process yes uh yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Malay has asked another question here. Twelve numbers of attributes seems to be more in ter uh, in terms. I think it could be reduced, and emphasis shall be more in the interview and interaction by the world class Indian expert as panel. Actually, the division of uh, attributes six into four five parts has made it twelve. Otherwise, it's only eight. Eight eight attributes. It's not all that many. Yeah. yeah. And and we are giving the weightages ha huh, for a different attributes it is not the weightage is not a <clears throat> for all the attributes yeah yeah it it just that the 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 number of attributes that you see there they cover uh, as i said rounded professional right they cover all aspects of structural engineering and that's why they have to be there how the same certification uh, the third question from mr malay is how the same certification could be validated in the international projects in other countries like international professional engineers as certified by iea any thoughts on the process uh, i'm not sure really what the implication is uh, i think what he's trying to uh, uh, question here is if if anybody becomes a chartered or oh, sorry again uh, accredited uh, structural engineer in india what will be the standing of that person on international projects uh, like uh, you know you have uh, iea giving uh, i think professional engineer or chartered professional engineer uh, can we do that for ia structi accreditation program 
So okay. yeah. my, my take on this is uh, we, we haven't reached to that stage yet to, to uh, you know, to reach out to international bodies and collaborate. But the more we do this, the more we have, uh, you know, this program, uh, success of this program, we would be in a position uh, as an association to have such tie-ups and such mutual recognition uh, between various, um, uh, you know, international uh, charter ship or accredited programs. Like if you see now, uh, Australia and UK have this mutual recognition. Um, Singapore and UK has mutual recognition. UK and US has mutual recognition. Something similar can happen in India, but for that to happen, we got to make this program a success. Yeah. Else, you know, we'll be continuing what we have been doing last 50 years and, mm -hmm. you know, nothing will change. I, I absolutely endorse what you said. You know, I think we are we're perhaps rightly apprehensive about certain issues, but let us give ourselves time uh, for the process to cook a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll Absolutely. begin to see the results. See, these all are the long-term uh, uh, benefits. Short-term, what I see, uh, if somebody has achieved this accreditation, it will be very easier for employers uh, to recruit uh, these engineers in their organization. So you will get a ready product. Uh, so that is, a, you can say, the low hanging fruits uh, for our industry in India. Yeah. So another question that he asked is, BIM, structure health monitoring, etc. some of the latest techniques are entering in the attributes. How the making on those shall be evaluated? Because Apparently, it may be assumed that 99% of the project in the country doesn't do it now, maybe in far future. So the opportunity for the same to attain such a work experience on those latest technology are very less for the candidates throughout the country. It is better to try to know if they have a knowledge on those and the experience may not be necessary as of now, considering the fewest uh, fewest projects in practice. I think that's that's what we are trying to do here. It's not the experience. We are saying that a person should have uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge Appreci and ap uh, appreciation towards it. Right. So we know that experience may not be there, and uh, not every project uh, going into BIM or Digital Twin or you know SHM or even for that matter, you know prefab and modular construction. Mm -hmm. But as long as there is an appreciation that yes, these things are happening outside world, and the person is aware of it by reading through, uh, you know, technical uh, papers, reading through, listening to maybe YouTube videos, whatever. As long as the the person has that appreciation, that is what we are expecting here. We are not expecting the person should have a hands-on experience. That's probably ten years down the line. And that's why the weightage given is less yeah. uh, for this particular attribute. Yeah. Then we have a question from Mr. Hari Hari. Sir, overall, how much does it cost? <laughs> uh, I don't have numbers with me, but I think it's there on the website. Yeah, yeah. It is see, for initial registration, it is 1,000 rupees plus GST. Yeah. And once you are up, we feel that you can able to register and uh, you are the right person. Then that registration fee for the entire process is uh, 10,000 rupees, 10,000 uh, plus GST. So it is quite uh, reasonable for such a uh, elaborate process. Um, Tirtha Roy has a question. Do I, I structure encourage field engineers engaged in construction also to go for this accreditation? Yes, why not? But you should able to demonstrate the other main core of the uh, this uh, attributes. Hmm. I think it's more to do with the you know field engineers. Yes, we are not you know you have an experience on on site, but at the same time we are talking about accredited structure engineers. So the basics of it is you should be able to uh, demonstrate the first three uh, key four. attributes in terms of four key attributes in terms of yeah. design. Uh, Juma Devnath, 
uh, has a question. I am pursuing PhD in structural engineering. Can I do an accreditation program uh, in IA Structi? Do I apply for the IPD, meaning postdoctoral IPD forms? Uh, he's saying postdoctoral. Uh, see, this particular program is for a practicing professionals. Okay. So all these candidates should have at least five years as uh, written in the document that five years of a professional uh, experience. And then only you will be able to demonstrate that all these key attributes uh, you have achieved. So even after a PhD, you should have some uh, minimum five years of a professional experience. Then only you will be able to apply for this program, accreditation. I think some of the requirements of the uh, key attributes that I mentioned does need uh, hands-on professional experience. Um, you know, some of them you might be able to do because you have more technical know-how or more during your PhD, you might be doing some research on certain aspects of the uh, structure engineering. But having said that, are you a rounded professional? That will be the question that you should ask yourself. And then go through these key attributes and, and, and then see that where you lack yourself and then fill in that. And to do that, we believe that a period of, as Umesh said, about five years is required for you to demonstrate that yes, you have done it. Uh, there's a question from uh, Ana Momin, Momin Mohamud. How can I apply from outside India? Is there a flexibility to date a peer uh, final return exam? Um, not okay. yet. <laughs> we haven't thought about this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. applying outside India, Mr. Momin, see, the forms are available online. Uh, you can pay online uh, to, uh, so the payment is not an issue. Forms and filling the, uh, uh, the document and preparing your IPD is not an issue. For the interview and exam, uh, flexibility might be a difficulty because we are, we are, you know, it is just the beginning of the entire process. So we will be, you know, conducting interviews at certain date and uh, exams at certain date, similar to any international organization. So once you go through the process and once you have, you will, you know, you are selected for the interview, we will notify you when the interview will take place and where it will take place. You can have a preference. Uh, we have four zones uh, within uh, IS Trakti. You could one of those zones headquarters, you can come in either in Mumbai or Delhi or wherever. But that's something which we can notify you. Uh, and then we could also notify you on the uh, exam dates. Uh, what at the moment is, uh, is planned is uh, um, twice a year and the process. Right. Yeah. And in, uh, generally, uh, we plan to do this in metro cities. Yeah. In India. Yeah. At present, we may extend yeah. to correspond in future. That's right. When I said it's not yet, I meant that the exams cannot be done outside India. Yeah, yeah outside India. Part. Outside India, not possible. Yeah. 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 Um, because we don't have a setup outside India. I mean, iStructi has it, the, the few others have it, but we don't have it. Um, Mr. Akash Solaki has a question. Is there any plan to include fresh passouts to develop their ability in a manner which make them capable to get accredited under this program in the future? Good question. Very good question. Yes, yes. So uh, there are certain guidelines given in the document. Uh, the uh, students or even the fresh engineers uh, can start preparing themselves for this accreditation program as soon as they join up uh, their professional career. And uh, we can mentor you. We can assign. Uh, uh, we can help you in uh, identifying the proper mentor for you. And then we will do handholding uh, to uh, achieve this particular uh, uh, goals. So yes, uh, definitely, uh, uh, Structi uh, will help you in this regard. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Manohar uh, Pakade has mm -hmm. a question. Sir, this is regarding recording of the previous two sessions. I did not get it on website. Please guide. So because uh, it, it is it is there on a YouTube. Uh, you yes, a YouTube channel. YouTube channel. I yes, stuck to YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. it's on the YouTube, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got two more questions. Um, Satvik, Mr. Satvik has written saying that good evening, sir. 
I have recently completed MTech Structural Engineering in 2022, and I want to apply for associate member of IA Structi. I don't have professional experience from any organization, but I have designed uh, design multiple buildings project while doing MTech. And after that, I have done research in earthquake engineering, I have published those in uh, you know journals, and I have done internship under government department and AMIE. Uh, my doubt is, am I eligible to apply for associate member of IA Structi? Uh, that is a different uh, question altogether. Stream apart. Actually, that's a stream apart altogether. Yeah. Um, associate See, membership or um, membership. I, I would I would suggest to you, Mr. Satvik, that you probably write a, a, an email to IA Structi because we are not discussing the charter ship. We are, we are not discussing the membership of IA Structi. We have yeah. regular membership. You have a student member, you have associate member, you have fellows and members and others. So you better write uh, an, an, uh, an email to IA Structi, putting all your credentials. Uh, it will be evaluated and you will be notified as to what level of membership you are eligible with. But this is not the forum for that. It is more to do with the accreditation, uh, accreditation program. Uh, Mr. Akash Solanke has another question. Is knowledge and experience in repair rehabilitation of a structure going to be part of this process? Um, it can be. How I see, finally, if it is uh, fitting in some object, you see, through this repair and uh, rehabilitation process, I should achieve those uh, key attributes. Then, yes. yeah, I, I don't think why not. I mean, I, I would think that it's part and parcel of the structure engineering. Right. As long as, <clears throat> as long as the key objective or key attributes are satisfied with those projects. So suppose you have a project of building and you know four-story building, and you are rehabilitating uh, it for the higher seismic zone or maybe adding a couple of floors on top of it or something, or maybe a bridge, right? So that means you should know what is uh, your load path. You should know what is a new loading condition. You should know what is new material going to be there. Could be polymer modified concrete, could be epoxy, could be anything, could be carbon wrapping. So as long as you know this and you can demonstrate that you have this valid experience, then yes, why not? And by the way, for repair rehabilitation, obviously you should know the design of the original structure. Yes, right. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Mr. Manor uh, thanked us, and then uh, this last question I could see here on screen is Asok Natu. Mr. Asok Natu is asking question that we can conduct the interview on online on Zoom platform, and also exam can be conducted online, as many of the international exams are being conducted online. Think on these lines. Uh, yeah, Professor. Well, I I think it's uh, in this context. It's not that it it is ruled out. It's not ruled out. But I would much prefer in a personal presentation, uh, you know, interacting with some peers for this interview. That is that is much preferable. Right. But, and these exams are, by the way, uh, offline and open book exam. Uh, so it will be difficult to conduct online. Interview, if yes, if is a very remote areas, we may consider, but uh, exam will be definitely uh, offline. Yeah. Right. I think that brings us to the, end of the questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I okay. no more. No more questions. <clears throat> My list at least. So, uh, what remains for me to do is to thank Mr. Kulkarni again and Mr. Umesh Ashirke for taking up these questions. Uh, but I would like to uh, thank heartily the participants who have put up those questions because this always helps the process yes, to yes. get improved. And I'm very thankful that they thought about those issues and they've raised the issues with us. Uh, some of the participants have been kind enough to appreciate our effort and appreciate this program. So I want to thank them as well. And uh, what I would like to say, is we're going to have three more sessions. And of course, not only just three more sessions now, please remain with us <laughs> and get into the process uh, th which is being offered through this scheme. Right. So thank you very much, all of you. And I hope to, uh, you know, meet you again 
in the next session. We'll announce the date shortly for the second session. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.